Exactly. Uh, speaking of downtime, in, in the old days, you, you, the team would go on the road and the guys would be able to go out for a nightly dinner and hang out a little bit. And uh, now everything's closed. You can't even hang out in the hotel rooms. What's, uh, what's, what's that like? What's, can you describe a typical night uh, on the road? It's essentially a traveling bubble. <laughs> but um, as players, we feel fortunate. I've said this before to even play. There's obviously a lot more tougher situations going on in the world today. But um, obviously, we don't get to go out for the 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 dinners and uh, we don't like to we don't get to hang out as much as we we'd like but at the end of the day there's rules set in place to to hopefully move on from this sooner rather than later and um, the rules are set in place for everyone and we have to follow them just like everyone else. So I mean, does this maybe help with your focus as a player or maybe strip the fun a little bit away of, of being a player? On the road? Well, there's definitely a lot of downtime, but um, at the end of the day. Um, it is what it is, right? It's 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 not like this just has happened. It's been going on for a while, and um, we feel lucky enough that we even get to play. So um, obviously, it's fun going out for dinners and hanging out with the guys and doing stuff like that. But uh, that's put on hold, obviously, and um, we've accepted that. Mark Masters, TSN. What did you feel you guys did well defensively uh, a couple nights ago to limit them? Well, if you look at their offensive lines and their team in general, they normally generate a lot of offense, and I thought we did a pretty good job of that. Obviously, they're probably saying they didn't do a great job of generating it, but we feel we did a good job of uh, shutting it down and limiting those chances. And um, Obviously, it's going to make for a good game tonight. Obviously, they're probably going to want to create more offense, and we kind of want to build where, where we left off. How does the absence of Austin Matthews tonight, he's out injured, uh, change the dynamic, do you feel? Well, obviously, when you lose a player like that, um, it, it doesn't help the team, but at the same time, they have a lot of firepower. They have a lot, a lot of good uh, skilled players, and they have a deep team, and um, they're going to bring the work tonight. But uh, at the end of the day, um, I'm sure they have people uh, over there that can contribute, and uh, I'm sure they're going to get that out of guys over there tonight. Last question, Jack Michaels, 6 of each head. Zach, first of all, uh, I did mention Ellery. I don't want her getting jealous. But uh, secondly, uh, my question would be, in terms of guys like Archibald and, and uh, Yamamoto, we think about these matchups physically where, you know, you're, you're matched up with guys your own size. But I'm just wondering, from your viewpoint, does it help having two undersized guys who play uh, the way they do and, and have the ability to frustrate and occasionally hurt bigger players with, with the way they throw their body around? Yeah, those two players have done a great job for us. I think they, um, they're they not going to give the bone-crushing hits, but they're very good at getting underneath guys. They hound the puck so well. They're smaller guys. They're very agile. Um, and that's the way uh, it seems like a lot of teams are going, and they do a great job stick on puck, creating turnovers, getting underneath guys. Sometimes that's more frustrating than, than the big hit. So um, they have to continue to do that for us to be successful. As that game wore on, did you sense that uh, the way the game was going because you were ahead was, was frustrating Toronto, uh, that they weren't able to generate much offense and, and because of the way you were taking away the middle of the ice? I think so. Obviously, when you have a lot of goal scorers and a high uh, output of offense on another team and they're not producing or not creating chances, it's definitely frustrating. I think our top guys would say the same thing. but. Um, that game's done. That game's over. I feel we did a good job, like you mentioned, taking away the middle of the ice. Um, not a lot of grade A. Um, and if we can do that and limit that, you're going to give your chance, yourself a chance to win tonight. So, Two late ones here. Jim Matheson and Jason Greger. Jim, go ahead. Uh, Zach, question for you. When you play a team back-to-back, -back, which doesn't happen very often in the, in the regular season, certainly not in the same building, is it? Is it more difficult for the team that's won the game because the other team said, okay, now we're playing the same team again, and so now here's what we didn't do well. Now next game, we're going to be much better as opposed to the regular season where you play a team once and home play another team. Yeah, it becomes a little bit of a, more of a chess match where uh, you saw the team uh, 48 hours uh, before, and uh, there's teams that... Uh, well, the team looks at video, obviously, there's no secret about that nowadays, and uh, they try to critique what uh, they can do to create more chances or play better, and then we're doing the same thing. So um, it obviously comes down to who executes better uh, in that second game and who has more urgency, and um, that's going to be big factors going into those, especially the second game with uh, the same opponent. Good, thank you.
Last one here, Jason Greger, TSN 1260. Mike, the last two years, you, you've got the 28th most 5-on-5 five five goals in the league. Um, you know, you, you fit in well and contributed a lot. I know you said you don't want to change your game, whether you're on the first line or if you're down to bottom six, but do you, do you feel more pressure to score now because you've proven it the last two years to be a guy that can contribute 5-on-5 five five and, and finish off more chances? Yeah, well, when you play on the top line, you got to score. There's... There's no first-line player that goes the full year without <laughs> creating and scoring a lot of goals. So uh, you definitely need to score. Uh, is it pressure? Yes, but that's just the name of the game. Obviously, uh, I'm not hitting the panic button. Um, we're, we're five games in here. So um, obviously, um, we got a, a step forward in the last game. Obviously, me, I'd like to pr get a little more uh, production, but at the same time, um, just stay patient, stick with it, and not get frustrated. I know... Uh, I know it will come. It's just a matter of time. And with, with, without crowds, and I don't know if you addressed this earlier, I apologize, but you know, you, you always being an emotional player, and you know, the, the games this year across the league, you know, barely been any fights. You know, it's not as physical. Do you sense that as a player? Like, has the game changed that much? Is it harder to change the momentum physically or even verbally now? Well, it's definitely different. I'll say that. I think you, I think every NHL player would agree that. Um, I think this whole pandemic has made us realize how much we truly appreciate the fans um, and the energy they create in the building. But at the same time, you have to try to create your own energy. Obviously, uh, it might not be there every shift, but uh, um, especially my job is to, to play physical and I have to find a way to, uh, to find something to, to get me uh, to do that on a, a night, nightly basis and a shift basis.